What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next section, dealing with quadratics. We're now gonna be talking about transformations of quadratics. And before getting into generally talking about transformations, we're not gonna go into too much detail in this video, just gonna give you a high level overview, and then we'll go into detail over the next couple of videos. But before even talking about transformations, what I wanna do is first start off by talking about the different forms that a quadratic can take. And then from there, I'll explain how transformations fits in this overall picture. So the form that we've been talking about mostly so far in previous sections is the standard form. Now a standard form quadratic the format that it's in, as we've gone through in previous videos, is ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, this is called a standard form quadratic, but this is not the only format a quadratic can take. It could also be in something called vertex form. Okay, vertex form is basically a quadratic that looks like this. Okay, and then there's another form called a factored form. A quadratic that is in factored form, and the format of this is a bracket x minus m, and then x minus m, right? Factored form, so these are the factors here of a quadratic. And we're going to go over factored form in a future section. Sometimes instead of m and n here, You'll see R and S used. Some textbooks uh, use those letters, but it doesn't really matter. It's really arbitrary. But where transformations fit in these different formats here is with this form, this vertex form. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in this section. Okay, transformations are done through the vertex form. And more specifically, what we mean by transformations is that we're gonna have our base function, y equals x squared. Okay, that's just the base, or sometimes you'll see it called the parent function, which we know it just looks like this. And what we can do with y equals x squared is we can transform it. So we can maybe shift it to the right, for example, so then it would look like this. Okay, we could shift it to the left, so then it would look like this. We can also take y equals x squared, we could shift it down. So it'll look like that, we could shift it up. Okay, we can also do combinations of these, so we can maybe shift it to the right and shift it up, or shift it left and shift it down. We can also do things like stretches and compressions. That's another type of transformation. So if this is y equals x squared, if we like vertically stretch it, then what would happen is it kind of gets taller like that. We could also take y equals x squared and vertically compress it, so it would look something like that. We can also reflect it in the x-axis, so it would be pointing downwards like this. So there's a bunch of transformations that can happen on this base function y equals x squared. That's what we're going to be going through in detail over the next couple of videos. And what determines the type of transformation that happens on y equals x squared is in this vertex form, these three values here, this a, this h, and this k. Okay, depending on the type of values that these take, that's going to determine the type of transformation that happens on a quadratic y equals x squared. And so what we're going to do over the next couple of videos is we're going to go through in detail what each of these letters here, this A, H, and K, mean specifically individually. So in the next video, we'll talk about the different values that this A value can take and what kind of effect it has on that Y equals X squared base function. Then in the video after that, we'll go over H, then K, and then we'll be combining them. 